today we're teaching you how to make authentic, thin crust, Chicago style pizza in your own home oven. So the first step in making any pizza is to make the dough. So let's get that started. We're gonna use 600 grams of AP dough and the very best dough for Chicago style pizza is Sarasota. That's what we're gonna be using today. It's the same one that most pizza shops in Chicago use. Now we're gonna add our instant dry yeast. This bread machine yeast is the kind I like to use. Then we're gonna add our salt. Now we're gonna add a little bit of sugar and we're gonna whisk up all these dry ingredients. Now we add our water and finally our corn oil. This goes right onto the mixer. And we're gonna run this on low speed for just a minute or two. So the dough's finished when it no longer sticks to the side. And what you'll find with this dough is that it's really dry. This dough is only about 50% water, whereas the Detroit style dough that we did in our last video was about 73%. So this is a much drier dough. So I just take all the dough off of the paddle. We don't even need to use a dough hook for this. And when you're finished, the dough shouldn't look like a dough ball at all. It should just look like this scrappy dough. And that's perfect. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the dough and kind of squish it together like this. Form it into some semblance of a dough ball. If there's a lot of little crummy pieces like this, it's no problem. This is part of working with a dry dough. Now we're gonna take this whole thing and we're gonna put it into a sealable plastic bag, just like that. When you seal it up, don't seal it up all the way. Leave it a little open on the side so it can breathe. Squish out all the excess air and kind of squish it back into that dough ball shape. This is gonna go into the fridge for anywhere from five to 48 hours. And as it does that, there's gonna be condensation and it's gonna make the dough ball stick together better. All right, now let's get to our pizza sauce. For this sauce, I'm gonna use a 12 ounce can of tomato paste and some tomato puree. All right, now that our puree is added to the measuring cup, we're gonna go ahead and add this tomato paste. This is still a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna add some water. When you've added the correct amount of water, your sauce should look something like this. Okay, now we're ready to add our additional ingredients to the sauce. We've got some sugar, salt, a bunch of oregano, red peppers, and finally, some fennel. All right, we're gonna crush up this fennel. Will you do the honors, Kyle? Yep. Kinda of smells like licorice. Yeah, it kinda of does. You gotta smash it really hard, just pound it. Get all your frustrations and anger. Pound it, hard, hard. There you go. Is that good? That looks perfect. Thanks. Nice. And finally, we'll finish it up with a little bit of garlic powder. All right, now that our sauce is prepared, we're ready to form the pizzas. So, this is our dough that has been refrigerated for about 30 hours. If you don't have 30 hours, you can just use five or six hours, but it gets better as you give it more time. So it should look something like this now that we're done. You can see all the little crumbs are sort of incorporated in there, and it's a nice soft dough. It can also be kind of sticky, so to keep it from sticking, you're gonna use a generous sprinkle of flour on the dough itself and on the working surface. Since this recipe makes two pizzas, we're gonna divide the dough in half. And we're gonna set one of these aside for later. Chicago style dough isn't really pressed out, it's actually rolled out. So we'll press it out a little bit, but most of the work is gonna be done with our rolling pin. So we make sure that it's got plenty of flour on it. And we start rolling it out. So we're not trying to get it necessarily into a circle right now. We're just trying to get a nice, large, flat piece of dough. Every once in a while, you wanna lift up the dough just to make sure it's not sticking. If it starts to stick, it means you need more flour. You wanna start from the middle and work your way to the outside. When you've got the dough about an eighth of an inch or less in thickness, then you're done. All right, once you have your dough rolled out to a nice, thin piece, then you can go ahead and take a pizza pan or even a plate and use that as kind of a template for making your nice round pizza. This is a 14 inch plate and the pizza that we're making is gonna be 14 to 15 inches. And so I'm gonna start cutting around the edge and I'm gonna leave about a half inch margin all the way around. And we take our rim off and what we have left is a nice round pizza. 
All right, so now that our dough is cut, we're gonna transfer it back to our pizza pan, but with on a piece of parchment paper. What you wanna do is go around the edges, make sure that's not sticking too much to your surface, and then to move it, all we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in half, fold it in half again, pick it up, and unfold it, just like that. Smooth out any wrinkles. And now we'll take a second piece of parchment paper, put it over the top, and now this whole thing can go into the refrigerator for anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. By putting it in the refrigerator, it makes the dough easier to handle once we go to make the pizza. All right, now it's time to prepare our cheese. We're gonna use a block of whole milk mozzarella for this, and I definitely recommend that you grate your own cheese because the quality of the cheese will be a lot higher and it won't burn so much. So when we grate our cheese, we wanna use a grater with these really big holes in it so that we get large pieces of cheese. So you can see about what size of pieces we have here. And we're gonna do that until we get about eight to 10 ounces of cheese for a 14 inch pizza. So when you're using some of the real fatty cheeses, they can get really soft and it can be really hard to grate. So I actually stuck this piece of cheese in the freezer for about 10 minutes, just to firm it up a little bit. And that makes it a lot easier to grate. All right, I think that's gonna be enough cheese. All right, so we're getting our pizza crust out of the refrigerator and we're gonna put it on to our pizza peel. I like to use rice flour and you can use regular flour if you want to, but it, sometimes it can leave a residue. This rice flour works really well. Just a little bit of it. Now we can take our pizza, put it on like so. And we wanna make sure that the whole process that this moves around really well. So first we're gonna add our sauce. I like to use about four large spoonfuls like this for a pizza this size. And this style of pizza, you go all the way to the edge. All right, now that your sauce is added, you're gonna to wanna to put about one third of your cheese onto the pizza right now. You don't wanna put all of it. We got our homemade sausage. And yes, it goes on raw. By putting it on raw, it preserves the fat and the flavor that's inherent in the sausage. And if you pre-cook it, you're gonna lose some of that. With our sausage in place, now we're gonna add our remaining two thirds of cheese. All right, now our cheese is fully loaded on the pizza with the sausage. We're gonna give it a little shake to make sure it moves. It does, and now it's ready for the oven. All right, now with our pizza in the oven, we're gonna cook it at about 450 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. All right, it has been about 12 minutes. Let's take a look and see what we got. Ooh, it is looking good. That looks tasty. I like to put the dough on a cooling rack for a few minutes after I pull it out of the oven, just so that the steam can escape and it won't make the bottom of the dough soggy. All right, I cannot wait to dig into this thing. Let's get it cut. Listen to that crunch. We always cut it into squares when we're in Chicago, tavern style. Cutting it into two or three inch pieces is normal. And there is our classic Chicago style pizza ready to eat. All right, that's gonna do it for our version of Chicago thin crust style pizza. I hope you guys liked the video and most importantly, I hope you try it at home. If you do like the video, please drop us a like and press the subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. And as always, pizza, pizza out. out.